Yes. So our next speaker is Dr. Jeremy Solon. He's from the University of Wisconsin Extension. Uh, he's a lifelong, lifelong environmentalist and educator, um, a father of three great kids. He's a key member of our Think Water team. And today he's gonna talk about his work um, which uh, helps water and natural resource related organizations and movements integrate systems thinking into their programmatic efforts. And what he's gonna talk about are two big initiatives which are the Think Water Fellows and the Wisconsin Water School. And it is from those two efforts that he's really dedicated all of his time to that our speakers are coming to you from today. So I hope he can contextualize that for you. So Jeremy. All right, it's good to be here, good to see you all. Thanks for being here. So uh, my goal, as, as Laura said, is uh, to provide some background for the, the presentations that are coming up from Thinkwater Fellows and Wisconsin Thinkwater School, and then also uh, share a couple of, of insights uh, along the way as well. So as we all know, wicked water issues are everywhere uh, and take many different forms. You can think about this in your, in your own community in, in uh, whichever way they play out. Uh, the things that they have in common, of course, are water and complexity, right? Uh, and we know that approaching these issues uh, the same way that we have done in the past isn't going to be effective. We've tried lots of things, continue to do the same things. Uh, we know that that, that doesn't work. Uh, and that's where Think Water comes in. So uh, Think Water, as, as you just saw, is a national water education campaign supported by U.S. Department of Agriculture, National Institute of Food and Agriculture. And USDA provided support to Think Water because it recognized that there were lots of great programs out there, lots of great research, uh, lots of great researchers, lots of great educators, uh, but they weren't seeing the impact on the health and sustainability of our nation's waters that, that they wanted to see. And uh, we believe that the missing ingredient in there is thinking, as, as Derek talked about. Uh, it's not more information, uh, but it's better in different ways uh, to think about things. Uh, and specifically, we're talking about systems thinking, which is why we say the next big thing in water education outreach extension isn't water, right? It's systems thinking. So, our mission vision within Think Water is to educate, engage, educate, and empower systems thinkers to solve wicked water problems across the country. Uh, and, and we do that in a, in a number of ways. Um, we basically aim to, to use systems thinking to strengthen water education research, uh, outreach, and extension. Uh, and with the current programs that, that we've focused on, Think Water Fellows and Wisconsin Think Water School, we've focused in particular on uh, the kind of education and outreach and extension aspect of this. In the past, uh, our past fellows program had more of a research focus to it, uh, but we're continuously doing all of these things in, in related ways, uh, working on applying systems thinking across these efforts. So, just to back up a, a little bit on this, uh, I want to kind of share three key strategies that we use as we've developed these programs, Think Water School uh, and uh, the Think Water uh, Fellows Program. So these are things that we've applied kind of ac across our efforts. Uh, the first one is training and support. Uh, so this has been the primary focus uh, of, of the work that I've done uh, working with both of these programs. So this includes a, a whole host of things to basically build systems thinking skills in, in folks that we've been working with. These are all uh, professionals who are you know, accomplished uh, in their fields, in their work, and our work is to provide them additional skills and systems thinking, help them apply this uh, to their work, and then provide support as they, as they try things out. So these efforts have include things like online training. There are online courses, actually, that everybody can, uh, can access through the Thinkwater website face-to-face -face trainings, consultation, online meetings, a whole host of things uh, to provide them the, the training and support uh, that they need. The second piece uh, is, is maybe a bit more interesting and a bit different um, from uh, how a lot of you approach this work, but it's uh, building the committed minority. And the com committed minority is a group of people who have a shared vision of, of where they wanna go, a shared language, uh, among the group, 
and kind of a shared passion for their work. And research shows us that this, this group of people, uh, a small minority of people who share those things, are what's at, able to create community change at whatever scale we want to think about that in an in a organization, in a geographic community, in a professional community, whatever the case may be. Uh, and so our work is, is really focused on helping to, to identify and build this share, shared com, uh, committed minority. Um, and we do this through finding you know, people like that are sitting in the back of the room that you're going to hear from uh, for the rest of the day uh, who have a shared interest and then helping them to develop a shared language of systems thinking and shared skills that they're able to, to apply to their, their situation. The third strategy uh, that we use is building a case. Uh, you know, we don't, none of us get enough money to, you know, do this work all over the place all the time as much as we'd like to. Um, USDA has been incredibly supportive, but they're not supportive enough for us to reach everybody we want to and everybody, everybody you know, wants us to. Uh, so one of the key things that we're doing is building a case for how this is effective and important work and what are the most effective ways to engage others, uh, help to educate them and empower them to apply systems thinking to this work. So we do this through uh, research and evaluation of our programs and documentation through articles, videos, and print materials. You get to see one of those videos uh, coming up. You just you saw uh, one of our products. Uh, the next one that you'll see is a particular case study of uh, Wisconsin Thinkwater School. So the building a case uh, provides the basis for us to extend the work that we're doing, uh, draw additional attention and, and support uh, for efforts like this. All right, so a uh, bit of an introduction to these two programs, uh, who you're gonna hear from for the, for the rest of the day, uh, Thinkwater Fellows and Wisconsin Thinkwater School. So much of my role over the past uh, two years has focused on implementing, innovating, and, and learning by applying systems thinking in Wisconsin. Uh, and so we've done that through a variety of ways. Uh, in addition to Wisconsin Thinkwater School, we have a, a network of practitioners, uh, but we're focused on Wisconsin Thinkwater School. Um, and you'll get to see a video of, of some of the impact here, but and, and the presentation's coming up. But Wisconsin Thinkwater School was an in-depth uh, training and support program for teams of professionals working across the state. Uh, we had six teams participate, uh, 20 participants uh, total. They were selected through an application process. Uh, we had over double the amount of applicants than, than we could take into the program. Uh, so we were able to select uh, really strong teams. And these teams, as I said, represent kind of a diversity of locations throughout the state, uh, approaches to programs, uh, types of organizations. So we have state agencies, nonprofits, we have people all, you know, far northern part of the state, far southern part of the state, um, working on K-12 education, adult community education, capacity development, the, the, the diversity of thing, things. Uh, and they, they all had a shared experience, basically. They took part in the online course. We had four face-to-face -face meetings in which uh, they all participated. And then there was consultation and, and support kind of along the way. Uh, one of the key parts of the programs was really the peer learning and the peer presentations uh, that took place and the feedback that, that they were able to get uh, from each other. And so today, uh, throughout the, the rest of the morning and afternoon, you'll hear for, from representatives of four of the Thinkwater School uh, teams. Thinkwater Fellows Program is a national fellows program, and as I mentioned, this is our second round of running uh, fellows program. Uh, two years ago, we had a fellows program. They focused primarily, were primarily water researchers. This group of Thinkwater Fellows are primarily education and outreach professionals, uh, and we worked with them to, again, integrate systems thinking into, into their programs. We selected 10 distinguished fellows out of a group of over 30 applicants. And again, from across the country, uh, Washington, D.C. to California, uh, north and south, lots of different programs and uh, issues that they're, that they're dealing with. And as fellows, they per also participated in online training uh, and then also had monthly online uh, meetings where the Thinkwater team provided support and they uh, presented and got, got peer feedback about their projects. And you'll hear from seven of our uh, fellows today. So 
to conclude, I just want to share a few uh, insights uh, from the time working with these programs over the past uh, couple of years, uh, just real briefly. Uh, the first one is the importance of team learning. Uh, this one applies particularly to Thinkwater School. Uh, as I mentioned, the Thinkwater School participants applied and participated in the program as a team or as teams. And the work that we did provided them uh, shared language and set of skills on which to, to collaborate. Having this experience helped them, you know, as a team, help them to continue to support each other. One of the, one of the most challenging things I've seen uh, in learning and applying systems thinking, and this applies to really learning any new skill, is that when you are uh, an individual in an organization, it's easy to kind of get lost in uh, that organization, the, the existing culture, uh, in trying to apply new, a new skill. And so this team learning aspect with Wisconsin Thinkwater School really helped them to have a, you know, a, a core group of folks who are trying things out, learning from each other, and um, you know, kind of resisting the cultural forces within an organization to be able to continue to apply those skills. So team learning is, is one of those important uh, approaches to, to uh, learning and application that, that we used. Uh, the second one, uh, this one shouldn't be you know, all that big of a deal, but unfortunately it is. Uh, within Wisconsin Think Water School, we called this water time. Um, we all come into this work because we're passionate about water and uh, creating healthy aquatic systems in one way or another. Uh, and, but what we find is we often end up in spaces like this, where we're inside doing our work all of the time. Uh, and so we were really intentional in uh, Thinkwater School to create space and time in the agenda to be in, on, or near water. Um, sometimes that was, those were uh, focused kind of programmatic efforts. Sometimes that was just recreation, reflection time. Um, but that really provided us uh, kind of a connection, uh, again, to the thing that we cared most about. Uh, provide us, uh, help to develop our sense of place as we, we met together and help to kind of deepen those relationships uh, with each other with uh, some additional shared, shared experiences. And uh, I think it provided some inspiration as we you know, continued to, to do our work together. And then the final uh, insight, uh, again, an obvious one is the importance of practice. So Derek really gave you everything you need to know about systems thinking. And in my experience uh, teaching systems thinking over the past few years, usually at this point you kind of have this idea of like, yeah, I get there are th these four simple ideas, but so what? Like they seem so simple. Like what, what happens now? And what happens now is you just do those <laughs> and pay attention to those four things that you're doing, right? Uh, and so it's all about practice and just applying DSRP to simple and complex issues that you're working on. Uh, and so Thinkwater School and Thinkwater Fellows basically created the space to be able to do that in a you know, very low risk atmosphere, right? That's really what learning is about. Uh, everybody can take these ideas, apply them in their, their real lives all the time. Um, sometimes we need structured programs that say it's okay to try these things and fail a little bit. Uh, but the, and I would say the other side of this is that it's hard a lot of times as professionals to take up something new because we're expected to be experts, right? We're expected to have things figured out by the time we're working with a group. And so these low risk environments are uh, incredibly important to be able to try out those skills, learn with each other, um, continue to practice. And so kind of at, at the core, uh, what I think of as the, the real value of Thinkwater School and, and the Thinkwater Fellows Program is really just this space to practice uh, with a little bit of support from people who've practiced it a little bit more, but really we're all still learning. Um, so incredibly important. So I'll, I'll leave you with this uh, Arthur Ashe uh, quote, which I think perfectly captures how we all become better thinkers uh, and, and is really about the importance of practice. Uh, we just need to start where we are, uh, use systems thinking, um, and get better and smarter as we progress. Uh, just continue to practice. So thank you very much.